Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to today's Caffeine for the Soul. And this is going to be part two of a series of five excerpts from the Super Coach audiobook. And today's excerpt is what I learned from my dogs about goals. And in it, you'll get to meet two of my, my dearly departed friends, Abby and Mishka. When my kids were young, we had two dogs, Mishka and Abby, who had very different personalities. Mishka was bored unless engaged in her favorite game, which, as you might imagine for a dog, was fetch. You would take her bone and throw it as far as you could, and she would chase it as fast as she could. Then she would bring it back to you and ask, well, beg you to throw it again. She wanted to play fetch continually, and I occasionally speculated that if I let her, she would keep chasing that bone right up to the point where she collapsed of physical exhaustion. I called Mishka a goal dog, because her behavior was similar to what I saw in compulsive goal setters. They continually set goals in every area of their lives, driving themselves forward relentlessly toward the ever-receding target of making it. They rarely stopped to consider what they would do if they did make it, and those who do succeed, at least by society's standards, often find themselves bored and empty until they throw themselves back into the fray. Essentially, compulsive goal setting is like playing a game of fetch with yourself, you throw the bones as far as you can, set the biggest goals you can imagine, and then chase after them with hyper-focused attention and continual action. The problem comes when your happiness and self-worth are attached to the bones. For most compulsive goal-setters, their sense of well-being comes from how well they think they're doing. And since they're constantly raising the bar on what success and making it mean, they're never doing well enough to feel happy and worthwhile. There's always more action to be taken and more targets to be reached, so there's never a sense of being content right where they are now. And as is too often the case, if they let themselves, they keep chasing those goals right up to the point where they collapse of physical exhaustion, mental burnout, or ill health. My other dog, Abby, was more of what I called a river dog. I called her that based on the writing of motivational speaker Earl Nightingale, co-founder of Nightingale Conant, who described river people as being those who are happiest and most alive when they're in the river, in whatever business or career or profession it happens to be. And success comes to such people as inevitably as a sunrise. In fact, they are successes the moment they find their great field of interest. The worldly trappings of success will always come in time. Abby loved the park, and she loved the house. She loved going for a run with my son, but... She seemed equally happy and content to hang out on the sofa with our cats. In fact, wherever Abby was, she threw herself into the mix without ever seeming to need things to be a certain way. Bizarrely, the one game Abby would almost never play was fetch. You could throw her bone as often as you liked, but unless you went and got it yourself, it would never be seen again. When it comes to us human beings, I think of these two approaches to life as being less about personality types than levels of understanding. If we think our well-being is dependent on circumstances, there will always look better than here, and we'll be on a constant journey toward ever greener shades of grass. If we know our well-being is innate, we're far less likely to turn our bone of happiness into a bone of contention and throw it off into some imaginary future, and far more likely to enjoy gnawing on it right here, right now. Here's the third secret. There's nowhere for you to get to. You're already here. Of course, just because there's nowhere to get to doesn't mean you'll no longer travel. Just that you'll no longer do so in order to get somewhere that's better than right where you're sitting now. It doesn't mean that you can't upgrade your car, your job, your finances, or even your relationship. It just means that if you do, it will be because you want to, not because you think you have to or you should. This idea can be disturbing at first to people who feel that the next big thing is continually just around the corner. But if they sit with it, most feel their shoulders begin to relax as their experience of the present moment deepens. For instance, I worked with an executive named John who adamantly refuted the idea that there was no inherent goal in life. Rather than get into an argument with him, I showed him a cartoon I'd found in a magazine of a business executive in a suit running on a treadmill with a dollar bill attached to his forehead just out of reach. John didn't find it remotely funny, but I could tell that it triggered some sort of insight inside him. Before our next session, 
he sent me this quote attributed to the comedian Lily Tomlin. The trouble with the rat race is that even if you win, you're still a rat. So in the next podcast, we'll go from talking about dogs to talking about hedgehogs. And we'll go from talking about goals to talking about wisdom. For today, if you want to learn more about the book, including how to get your copy of the book or audiobook, go to michaelneal.org forward slash supercoach. Until next time, have fun, learn heaps, and I'll talk to you soon. <laughs>